Hey guys, Chris from Ultimate Recycler. I just had a quick phone call from a local guy who does garden maintenance and shed cleanouts and that sort of stuff. Uh, I've just been spending the, the morning in the back of the shop sorting out some boxes of stuff and uh, Rick rang and said he's out cleaning out a shed. Most of it's going to go to the tip. He just thought I might be interested. So let's go out, see if we can find anything of value and stop some stuff going to landfill. Okay, I've been here for a little while. We've had a bit of a rummage through the shed and I've made a bit of a pile. I'll show you in a tick what I found. Uh, there's the old shed there. It's uh, behind an old house here. I won't film the house, but the property has just been sold. It has uh, a nice sort of rural aspect here. You can hear the birds probably chirping. Um, there is water of the river just around the back. I'll come over here and we'll have a bit of a look down there. Nice deep long block. You can see the water back there. I don't know what the property is sold for, but it will be developed and, and properties around here are making a lot of money on the water. Uh, but this old shed we've had to rummage through. Uh, Rick was told to clean it out, take it all to the tip. Um, the new owner doesn't want it. He'll probably even demolish the shed. They've got what they wanted out of it and it has been rummaged through. I've got a few things here which I'll go through with you in a minute. Let's have another look in the shed to show you what I had to deal with. Very typical of an old garage that kind of gets left and built up junk from over the years. Now I had a look in this shed I reckon about 12 months ago the real estate agent got me out here to quote on buying the contents and we couldn't get past the front door. There was some good stuff that I could see at the time. There were a big stack of old fishing rods down the back. I think there was a, a ride on mower included which was just at the front here. There was furniture. I was quite interested in buying the deal but they never got back to me so either I didn't offer enough or the owner at the time decided that he was going to market the things himself and that's fine. So they've rummaged through the property and it has now changed hands and the new owners have come through and had a big rummage themselves and and there's no fishing gear left uh, a lot of the furniture and bits i think there was a boat in here too and that's gone so obviously this is just the dregs uh, and rick was as i said he was instructed to take it all to the tip so we've rummaged through a bit um i've pulled out a bit of scrap metal there was some big brass taps my process in these jobs particularly when I'm basically just picking. Uh, I don't have to do the total cleanup. So my process is just basically starting in one corner, going down the shelves, looking in cupboards, looking in tins, always look in tins and jars. You'll be amazed what people put in jars. I've found, I've found lots of jewellery and coins and all sorts of stuff that end up in the shed. God knows why. Maybe he doesn't even know. Uh, you always get lots of paint. Um, I quite often get um, workshop consumables to take home from my shed these are all empty but as i said in this particular job i'm only really here for a quick 10 minute scan so i did pick out a few old tins these uh castrol grease things they're more modern they're in grams so i do look for the ones that are in pounds and ounces uh they would still sell if they were clean but it's not worth the worry they're quite messy to clean up old grease cans and we're only looking at five maybe ten dollars tops um, in years to come they might be a bit more collectible but it's a very messy job cleaning out old grease cans so I tend not to worry unless they're a really good tin so I didn't find very much here on the shelves um, it's really been rummaged through two or three times so it's become a bit of a jumble and clearly most of it is just rubbish there's always lots of old paint cans so I don't have to deal with those in, on this occasion which is great mattresses well They'll be going to the transfer station. Rick has got to come back and do another load, I think, today. The old bed ends I don't want at all. So I'm only grabbing stuff of, of immediate value for me, and it's saving what Rick has to deal with. Uh, I've been through all the drawers here. There wasn't much in them at all. Uh, clearly there's been mice in there. I haven't seen any wildlife, which is cool. Uh, so... There wasn't a great deal, but, you know, I still got enough to make it worth my while. That's a really nice old cupboard, probably 1920s uh, sideboard. That's a door sitting on top of it, so the actual top might be quite good. Interestingly, it's got three different styles of drawer handle, and they're all retro-y, probably 40s or 50s, whereas the actual cabinet itself... See, there's uh, small cut dovetails there, so it's going to be 1920s or earlier. So typical shed workbench and it's been obviously well used but the owner did want to keep that. I would consider taking that otherwise it might be um, 
up, be able to be upcycled into something really good. Beauty is that it's nice real timber. There's no um, manufactured chipboard or anything. But we can't take it because it was supposed to be left here. Uh, there was a little bit of glassware and stuff, but I didn't want any of that. So Rick can deal with all that. So that's what's left in the shed. Pretty well, this will have to go to landfill. He will be taking the vacuums and things to the transfer station for e-waste. So Rick does his best as far as keeping the bulk of the stuff out of landfill. But sometimes, particularly in his line of work, it just has to be cleaned up quickly and you don't have much other option. Let's have a look at what I managed to save though. There's a couple of really good old ladders. There's one A-frame ladder standing there. These old ladders are really popular decorator items. That one's had a new top put on it, but it is real timber. So they're great pieces. They will get, oh, I reckon they will get 50 to $75 each. I've salvaged this uh, VC Sports Victor lawnmower. It's a two-stroke. It would date to the late 70s, maybe mid to late 70s. Uh, it looks pretty complete. I don't have a catcher for it. Uh, it's not particularly beaten up. It might be a cool project just to see if we can get running. I'm not going to restore it, but maybe we'll do a video on getting an old Victor two-stroke running, uh, assuming it hasn't got a major, a major um, problem in the engine. But look, even as it is, I'd probably sell that for 30 bucks for parts. Uh, this is a pretty cool old ladder. Looks like it's a oh yeah, PMG ladder. So that's like a early telecom or Telstra type technician's ladder. Uh, that'll be a nice piece. I think that'll clean up quite well. We're going to be probably looking at about $40 or $50 on that one. Uh, got some interesting old pegs. I don't know. These look like super heavy duty tent pegs. They might even be military ones. Uh, they're worth grabbing. We'll sort them out later. There's some big old brass taps, a gate valve, some row locks off a, a rowboat, some rim locks off some doors, uh, a little bone handled knife there, brass tap, some old hinges, stuff that's useful and it will sell if I don't need it. There's an old miner's pick. Uh, they're pretty old. The anodized aluminium cups are great. They sell really well. Now these ones hopefully will clean up quite good. Uh, it's not a complete set. In fact, we've got two blue ones. But even so, there's going to be probably $10 to $20 worth in those cups washed up. There's a, an old quail cast cylinder mower here, just a push one. They make good garden ornaments, but they most most of the time they still actually work. So that's going to be 30 bucks. A really nice old galvanized rubbish bin. Now I don't know if many of you would use the term really nice in front of a rubbish bin. But it's, these are super heavy gauge metal. They're so well galvanized that the things will never rust out. I think it's probably a Willow brand. But um, really good condition. And I would sell that for probably 20 or $30. And if I don't really want to sell it, I could use it in my yard for keeping scrap and keeping it waterproof. There's a brass sprayer, various pieces of old cutlery. Um, so, yeah, look, there's even a chance of finding some sterling silver cutlery. It's remote, but there is a chance. We have some tins. Uh, this one's jointing paste for soldering, I think, or brazing. Uh, it looks like an older tin that's made in England. Maybe $10 there. Now, these tins, this one's an older one. I couldn't even see a capacity on it. But I think it'd be earlier than litres, so that one might be a $20 to $30 tin. These other ones are a bit more modern. They are in litres, but they'll still well sell quite well at 10 bucks or so. They make great displays in the shed. Uh, big electric motor, just simply because I'm a scrapper and electric motors pay well. It looks like it was a pump or something, but it weighs well. This is a lid off a 44-gallon drum or a, uh, what are they, 200 litre or something, 205? I'm not sure now, but I'll use that just purely for keeping the weather out of stuff that I'm storing in drums. There's some old timber crutches, a little trolley thing, maybe a laundry basket trolley. Got nice old wheels on it, so if nothing else, I might use the wheels. And a box full of cords at the prices of uh, insulated copper wire. It's always worth grabbing the old cords. Nice little penetrine tin here. I think that would be probably a 10 or $20 tin, depending how well it cleans up. We have a retro reading lamp, anodized aluminium shade, quite a nice cast iron base on it, it's very heavy so I think that's worth cleaning up and just testing that would get $20 if it cleans up well 
Uh, what else was in this box? I just kept throwing things in the box. I'd grab any bits of brass for obvious reasons. It's paying pretty well. Some more door hardware. Uh, that's a much older lock, that one. So yeah, well worth saving. There's going to be some good value in here for me. Certainly much better than taking it to landfill. Or even scrap metal for that matter. So what I'll do is I'll get this home now. Uh, it's supposed to rain soon and I have some other jobs to do at home before it does. So I better pack up and get out of here. I will sort through it and do a list and we'll get a bit of a, an approximate value from uh, from the lot when we get it all sorted out. Uh, now Rick said he was just more than happy for me to take it. It was saving him taking it to the tip. But uh, I'm going to do a bit of a, a tally up and I'll put some cash in an envelope for Rick. It's good that I'm pleased that he calls me. It'll encourage him to call me again. Uh, I like to look after the local community uh, who look after me, of course, and do the right thing and be fair. So I'll certainly be giving Rick some money down the track. That way everyone's happy. Just heading back to the shop now. Thought I'd take you across Kerwin's Bridge. It's a nice historic bridge across the Goulburn River. It was built in the 1890s, I believe, and it was originally a double width bridge. They've, you can see one side there, it's um, no longer in use because it's all rotted away. And it's um, and it's now obviously handles traffic up to about five ton. It's heritage listed. I don't know why it has a bend in the middle of it. I think I did read it once. Um, I don't think it's as simple as they start at each end and nearly missed and had to join in at an angle in the middle. It has got passing bays now so that it's kind of one way, but if you see a car coming, the first one who gets to a passing bay pulls in. Uh, it's only 20 kilometers an hour speed limit, and it must be terrible to ride a push bike across if you look at the gaps between the boards. But it's a pretty cool old bridge. Um, there's been a lot of community effort over the years to try and save it. Uh, it does need a lot of upkeep, uh, and it's really probably not practical when there's a fire shed, fire station just the other side, and for the fire truck to get to a, a fire on the outside of the river they've got to do about a nine kilometer round trip because they're not laid over the bridge anyway it's a pretty cool old bridge part of our history it was put in in about the 1890s i think i said when the goulburn river was um, had a weir put in and it made the river a lot higher and wider so uh, there we go a little bit of history in this video i'm back at the shop now fortunately the rain's held off this Victor lawnmower is staying in the van. It's the only thing out of this deal that I'm actually going to take home. Uh, not that I need any more projects. I've got enough to see me through a few lifetimes. But I thought I'd do a quick video on just seeing if we can get this Victor running. For seeing what's involved with it. Um, I'll take you through the processes of checking out a two-stroke and whether it's worth it. I'm not going to restore the thing. We'll just see if we can get it going as a bit of a challenge. Excuse all the rest of the junk in the van that's left over from another deal we've done recently. I've usually got three or four wardrobes in the air juggling these days. Let's go and have a look at the rest of the stuff. The old push mower is the easiest thing to process. It's carried it, I've carried it about three feet, chained it to the pole at the front of the shop and uh, it can stay there until it sells. Don't even have to wash it up. I'm going to put $30 on that one. Okay, out the back, I've just spread everything out here. Uh, I'm going to have to pack it up quickly though because uh, there's a few spots of rain just starting to form. Uh, the timber ladders and uh, the other timber bits and pieces I'll actually leave out here. They can have a wash. Nature can help out a bit. I'll process this other stuff and rather than just fill more bits and pieces and go over stuff a few times, I'll, um, I'll get back to you when I've got it all processed and listed and we'll see how the price works out. Okay, let's run through all this stuff and make a few comments as we go. Everything has been washed up and priced. Uh, I think I mentioned prices on these things. I put 30 on the Gel bin. I put 20 on the old uh, vintage timber crutches. They're in pretty good condition. Uh, that little trolley I just put 10 on. I'm still not sure. Maybe it was a rubbish bin trolley. Probably fit in there. Uh, the ladders washed up nicely. Did a few little value adding bits. If there's loose nails or a loose screw, I fix them up. It's all about getting the best value as efficiently as I can. I've priced those ladders out at $60 each. And the PMG one's pretty cute. It actually folds down from a step ladder and then folds up into a normal ladder. I didn't notice that one of the steps has split a bit. But otherwise it's pretty good. I'll put 40 on that one. And moving inside to some of the smaller stuff. We'll scan along here. You can see it's all washed up very well. We put 10 on that little jointing paste tin. The penetrine tin was quite a nice one. I'll put 25 on that. 
uh, in pretty good condition. Now the gallon tins or the five litre tins, this one was a gallon tin and even though it's a little rough, they tend to get pretty good money, these earlier ones. I put 45 on that. And I thought both these Keltex ones were 5 litre ones. However, as you can see, the different sizes or different heights, this one is a 5 litre one. And even on eBay, they're still pulling pretty good money. So, what did I put on that one? About 35, I think. Yep, 35. And the get this one's actually a gallon one, and it's in excellent condition. It's an older um, soldered tin. So we put 75 on that. It ended up being a nice tin. The large gate valve, I took the fittings off that and I'll weigh up the brass at the end of this video as well. Uh, $30 we should be able to get for that. It actually works fine. The gate part operates very well. A couple of old vintage door hinges with plenty of character. I just put 10 the pair on those. Uh, the brass taps, I find they're always worth much better than brass value, even though brass is worth quite a bit at the moment. I'll put 10 each on the larger ones. And I think they're around about 5 to $6 worth of brass. So I'm doing almost double my brass value. Uh, the small chromed one I just put 5 on. This was a bit unusual, this little brass tap. It works fine. I suspect it's off something like a, an early milk separator. Um, and I've put 10 on that one, I think. Yes, 10. Uh, the old pig heads cleaned up quite well. This one, I think, actually had... You should be able to see it just there. Looks like it's a Department of Defence broad arrow. Uh, it may be just some random marks that have arranged themselves to imitate that. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it'll make a huge difference to value. I've just put 10 on that. And the other pick head, um, I've put 10 on it as well. It cleaned up pretty well. These uh, brass Rolocks, I did some checking on these and I didn't find any online with this swivel bracket. Uh, they're in very good condition. They're solid brass. They're going to be quite old. I put 50 on the pair. I think having a pair and they're in operational condition, I think they're a, a pretty good item. So I'm going to price them up a bit. The reading lamp cleaned up excellently. Uh, anodized aluminium. It's got a few marks on it. The gooseneck's in good order. I cleaned up the... It's a crackle type finish to the cast iron base. And I have tested it. It works well. So I've put 20 bucks on that. Uh, my hunch was right on these uh, uh, tent pegs. I think you can see on the top of that, a DROD, which is Department of Defence. So they would have been uh, used for army marquees or tents or something along those lines. And I'd say they're pretty early. I've put 20 bucks on those. I don't know how we'll go there. Really just doing a bit of fishing. And the brass sprayer, I think I just put 10 on. I get a lot of those. So I'll clean these ones up. I mean, I have cleaned them up. I'll pack them up in a box and they can all go in the shop. We'll get the next lot out and show you what I price the rest of it at. Here's the smaller stuff. Let's scan along here. Um, for a start, this four-way power board, or five-way, with switches. Um, I need one for my shed, so I'm going to take that one home. I would probably put... I tested it, and I'd probably put $10 on it if I wanted to put it in the shop. But we'll take that one home. Uh, some of the cutlery went quite well, and it amazing, it's amazing what this adds up to. I put 15 on this English knife. It's in really good condition. And these cleaned up pretty well. There's a bone-handled matching... Uh, knife sharpening steel i uh, put 10 on that there's another english knife here a bread knife with a painted wooden handle i put 10 on that and a really cool old timber handled potato masher uh, that's a really nice design i put 10 on that i think that'll sell quite well kitchen ale is very popular i always say that and but it sells well uh, now a lot of this silver plate stuff we didn't find any sterling, sterling silver but there's certainly some good age to it these are all probably late 1800s and they're really well worn some of them are dessert spoons some are larger tablespoons uh, they're all a bit rough i just i put 10 on the lot uh, just simply because they're all such old ones uh, there was another one a tablespoon here with a nice design on the handle it's only um, plated again epns and put five dollars on that one some more bone handled knives here they're not really bone it's actually a faux bone it's a a compound powder but they sold really well i've put five on the pair but um those in good condition i usually get five dollars each for uh the anodized aluminium cups beautiful colors they're um a little bit scuffed but they're not too bad it's not a complete set uh and i've put 20 on that set they'll look great in the shop and i'm sure they'll sell at that some kitchen shears they work very well i just put five there a novelty bottle opener i put five on that uh, a wolf whistle, uh, sorry, a fox whistle. Um, I think you can still buy these new. Uh, this has got a bit of age to it. It'll get $5. Uh, 
Uh, a bottle opener here, it's a Persian wear one. They often um, are chased by guys that collect vintage eskies because some of the eskies actually have a spot for those. Um, we should get five for that. Uh, a bit of door hardware here. These are the striker plates or the keepers, and they're actually quite hard to get. A lot of people will find the old door locks, or you might have a complete door, but when the house was demolished or the the old um, stuff was removed from the place, people often forgot the keeper that was actually attached to the door frame. So I think I'll get 10 each for these ones. That one's solid brass, and five for the deco cast iron one. So 25 bucks for those three. Uh, this was just on some wire. I always take these Bakelite plugs if they're not damaged because there's people who restore old radios and vintage appliances that are looking for original Bakelite plugs. So I'll get $5 for that. It's an Australian made one. Uh, El Maco or El Maco. Probably El Maco sounds like it's a Spanish uh, burger from McDonald's. But anyway, it's a plug, a Bakelite plug. There's a bit of random uh, hardware here, some escutcheons from doors, uh, some window pulls, and oh, there was a couple of nice escutcheons in here. Great for people that are doing um, furniture projects. I put five a lot there, there's some pretty good value in that. A larger uh, box full of door hardware here, that's a nice old lock. It doesn't have any maker's mark on it, but it's a beautiful old lock. Some more modern ones. When I say more modern, these are probably 1930s or 40s. That one would be early 1900s. Uh, range of various doorknobs and things. I'll put 20 on the lot. Someone that's um, into vintage architectural stuff would probably like that. And this is another box of locks. These are mortise locks. They go in the edge of the door. Quite a lot of doorknobs and some of the square shafts are in there and the striker plates for these. I just put 10 on that entire box lot there. So... I normally wouldn't have grabbed these, but they were all in the one box and I wanted to go through the box and I think I'll get good value. They were in the box. So it adds up to a fair bit and I like to sell box lots. Um, it's good value for someone and it clears out the stuff pretty quickly for me. So that's most of the stuff. We just have a few other little bits to tidy up and uh, then we'll get a total. So here's the little extras that were kind of in the bottom of the box that I didn't price separately. Uh, this lamp fitting, it's a Bakelite switch i possibly could get five bucks for that but i'm going to put that in a box because i use them quite often uh, when repairing lamps and that switch feels good so i'm not going to price that it can go into my store a uh, little bit of other silver plate cutlery nothing outstanding here nothing worth pricing separately but i do throw those into a box in the shop for a dollar each so you know there's five or six bucks um, a little alligator clip uh, battery terminal clip of some sort. I usually have a box lot of those in the shop for like five bucks a lot. That'll just get absorbed into existing stock. Uh, this I probably would have priced separately if it had been a bit cleaner, but the plating's coming off. So that'll just go into a 50 cent bin in the kitchen room. Uh, a few little brass nuts, uh, screws and a nut there. I usually have a jar of brass hardware. Anything that, that uh, when I'm sorting out hardware, the magnet doesn't stick to. I'll either put in the scrap or throw in a jar, and these are in good condition. So a jar full of brass hardware I'll get $10 for, but that's negligible. Likewise, there's some old coach bolts here and a few other nuts and bolts that are in pretty good condition. They just go to fill up jars that I sell in the shop. I'm not going to write a price down for those. And an old padlock. It's a, actually a Sid Chrome or Sidco, Sid Chrome padlock. It's a bit rusty, corroded, and I didn't have a key, and it won't even lock. Again, I'll just put that in a sorted box in the shop. And we found some money. Look at this. Four cents. Old copper coins we don't use in Australia anymore. These are probably 1970s, maybe 60s. Oh, that one's actually not even Australian. What's that one? It's a penny. Is that English? I can't quite make it out through the phone. It's probably English. It's got a coin's head on the back. Um, negligible value there. So, what do we have left? We have a bit of brass. We have a large electric motor. And we have some insulated copper wire. So I'll weigh these up now and see how we go with our scrap value. Now, since scrap metal is paying pretty well at the moment, it's always worth grabbing these bits of brass and electric motors and the copper wire. There was no brass pieces in there that I deemed were saleable. Uh, and because brass pays pretty well, uh, that lot there weighed just over three kilos, which equals almost $20. So not bad, hey? 20 bucks worth of brass. 
The electric motor weighed around about 12 kilos. Now, I know it's got a pump on it as well, but I think we'd get away with that in the electric motor bin because the pump doesn't add up to a lot of weight. It's very small and it's certainly not worth the effort to take it off. Some people do strip out the electric motors for copper wire. I don't have the time at the moment. But as that sits there, 12 kilos equals about $12, about a dollar a kilo. That's pretty good. And the insulated copper wire, this pays pretty well at the moment for copper recovery. As long as you chop the plugs off and it's all decent thick wire, it's paying, uh, it was almost up to four, I think it was $4 a kilo. It's dropped back a bit now, $3.75, I think, a kilo. There was two dollars, uh, two kilos there, so that's uh, actually is a bit over three seventy five, I think. So it would we'll write down eight dollars for that lot. You can see it's worth saving. It really adds up very quickly. Some people do strip it out again, and there's some some here that's probably worth stripping, but it was only a small section. I don't have the time to do that at the moment. So for the purposes of this video, there's eight dollars worth of wire, which brings our scrap price to forty bucks. So that's not to be sneezed at. It'll just go into my bins ready for a load when I do another load soon. So what's the total of this deal then? Well, I wrote down all the stock items. And we must also remember I took that Victor mower home, but I priced it at 30 in its con current condition. And the real mower that, or the cylinder mower that we chained up out the front. So I've priced everything there as I've suggested. We got two full pages and the price adds up to... $840 worth of stock. So who would have thought, hey? Stuff that was going to the tip. I'm sure Rick didn't think there was a lot of value there. Of course, I can get good value having a second-hand shop, and that's what I do. But, uh, you know, to me, this is this is a double-edged sword in that it's great, if you, if you consider a sword good, I guess. Um, we're saving all this stuff and going to the tip. We get to stack up a bit of scrap metal, which I haven't included in that total. So we've got 40 bucks on top of that. But this is my shop stock. Uh, I will make some pretty reasonable money out of this. It keeps all this stuff in circulation. There's some stuff here that's going to be actually useful. Brass taps, uh, pick heads. There's lots of stuff here that people actually use. There's also collectible things people will love for their collection, uh, particularly those oil tins. So... It's a great score for me, and Rick was grateful because it saved him another half a load going to the tip. And what's that mean overall? Well, I'm going to give Rick some extra money. It encourages him, hopefully, to ring me next time. Uh, everyone's happy. Not so much stuff goes to the tip. How much am I going to give him? Well, $840 is my retail. I will apply my formula, which I'll be doing a separate video on that shoot soon, and I know I keep hinting that I will but it will be coming. But it basically all boils down to, I'm going to put $125 in an envelope to give to Rick, which he certainly won't expect. I did tell him I'd give him something, but I'm sure he won't expect that. Um, and look, that's good. I'm still making some very good profits. I did spend about five hours processing it all, so I've allowed for my time as well. But this is a way that I can... I can keep everyone happy, keep encouraging people not to think of the tip as the first port of call and perhaps give me a ring first. And uh, and it keeps me in business because I make some good profits. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll be doing plenty more of these videos. Um, certainly judging by the feedback I get on YouTube as far as the thumbs up and the comments go, these videos are very popular. Um, I hope I'm teaching you that things don't always have to go in the bin. There's quite often a sale for them or a use for them. Well, many of you won't be aware of scrap metal prices. Uh, there's lots of guys around like myself that do a bit of scrap as a hobby. And, uh, you know, even if you just put a note on Facebook, if you want someone to pick it up, um, there's plenty of guys that'll be keen, particularly while scrap prices are good. So I appreciate your support. We'll look out for you in the next video. Bye.